For the past several months, I have had this little blue box sitting on my nightstand, making my life miserable. This was sent to me by my friend, Ken. He sends me strange, obscure things, and I think he takes delight in my consternation and, and, and my inability to figure out what they are. And the contents of this thing has me completely stymied. What's been really difficult is in the bottom of the box is a, uh, is, are the instructions that would tell me what it was, but I have exercised restraint and I have pulled it out every couple nights and I've looked at it and I still, for the life of me, cannot figure out what it is. So we're going to try to figure this out again today. This has completely got my go. Let me bring you in here closer. Can we focus on it? Let's see if you know what this is. So it's, it's obviously old. It is a, uh, a kidney shaped box, all metal. It's got a stainless steel top on it and sides. It's got two push, now that's never done that before. I have pushed on these buttons. I have pushed on these buttons so hard, so many hundreds of times, and just now it's gonna come out? Okay. Well, this is new. So at first I thought it was, at first I thought it was a pencil sharpener. Oh, focus, focus, maybe we'll come up here closer here. First I thought it was a pencil sharpener because it has this hole in there and I put a pencil in there and it just fell through. And obviously it's a smooth barrel. There's no teeth or no grinders or anything in there. So it's not a pencil deal. And then what really, and I just figured this out this morning, I was looking at it again. I was pulling on these pull tabs here. Obviously they have little indentations and I was, I'd pull on them and I didn't want to break it because it, you know, it is, it's old, it's an antique and it's fragile. And this morning for the first time I pulled on it a little bit harder and it exposed its inner secrets. All right, so inside of here, now I've never had this open with a handle before. Inside of here, I could see it, but I can really see it now. Let's see if you can see that. Inside of here is uh, two leather wheels. See those leather wheels right there? And they go, I've never been able to make them go around. I couldn't, I just, this was turned like this and the leather wheels were kind of parked clear in the back and I couldn't tell what they were. But now I can, with, I can't believe that thing came out there. I have pushed on this handle. I can't, you know, I did drop it last night and I wonder if that broke something loose and if that opened up that handle. As I pushed on those things, I couldn't figure out what they were. This is, so, Okay, so it goes round and round, goes round and round, and those wheels are, are on some sort of a cam, and they're covered, covered with leather, and, oh, look at that. Okay, so this is, so this thing here turns around, look at that. This thing here, oh, focus, focus. See how it turn, flips around, turns around and around? I know I'm looking at my monitor, it's nothing worse when you don't make eye contact with a lens, but I need to see that you can see everything. See, that thing goes round and round. It flips something. So let's use our, let's use our massive intellect here. So wh why would you use leather? And the only thing that I could think that you would use leather for something is for like a strop, right? That's what you use for sharpening razor blades. I, I can't figure it out. And why? Why is there a second, why is there a hole here? Look at the handle, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it's just completely, it's, I'm completely confused. I mean, I, I just cannot for the life of me figure out, figure out what this thing is. And why does that open up? Is that so you can clean it? What would you strop? You can't fit a knife in there. All right. I don't know. I, I just have no idea. We're going to have to, <clears throat> we're going to have to get the instructions. All right. So here we go. I have waited for this moment. We're going to find out together, hopefully what this, what this thing is. All right. So here are the instructions. It says here, can I read it together? Focus. Oh man. Focus. So twi twin plex stropper, the aristocrat of the shaving world. 
Okay, so we were right. Of course, that's we I, we kind of figured that. It's got leather, so it has something with stropping, but stropping, like how would you sharpen a razor with that? You can't fit a razor in there. I'm reading. Of course. It's so simple. It's for sharpening razor blades. All right, okay. That's why it spins, that's why it spins. Okay, here we go. So here, <laughs> so you know the old style razor blades the, uh, that are, they have the blade on both end and they have that funny little, little uh, I think of the Judas Priest album cover with a razor blade on the front. <laughs> Dating myself, I think I had that LP. All right, so now I understand. So this thing here, it showed it coming out. Will it come out? Come on, come on. Ah, uh, okay, so got here we go. So you open this thing right here and you lay the razor blade in there. You see the little, uh, are we focused there? I'm so sorry. It's too, I can't open up the aperture and I have to have a shallow depth of field because it's dark out here. Okay, so the razor blade goes in there. You put the razor blade in, you close it. Then as you turn this guy, look at this. As you turn it, see how it, how it, every turn it flips the razor blade. So it drops on both sides. I mean, that is so brilliant. And then the leather wheels come up. See how they, and they turn. How about that? Look at the, look at the thing turn. The little handle on it. <laughs> but what's this hole for? Oh, the hole is, it's just, that's just a carrier for the, for the, the wheel. It's just a, it basically, it's an axle shaft. I can see the gears inside. Wow. Now that's, that is brilliant. I wish I had one of those old school razors. I don't have or those razor blades. I don't want to focus. I don't have one of those things to test it. What's incredible is look how good a condition that the leather is in. Can you see that? I mean, it's not, it's, it's even, it's even feels moist to the touch. Like it's been like someone's put a protected on them. It's really, really a, a gorgeous thing. How about that? Man, that has bugged me for no end. How cool that the uh, handle, look at the little handle, how it stores inside there. I love it. Well, I feel much better. I, I can sleep in peace now. Thanks, Ken, for making my life miserable for so many months trying to figure out what this thing is. It's, a, <laughs> it's for sharpening blades. But unfortunately, he sent another thing I have no idea. I have no idea what this is. It's a roller. It's got a spring on it. It's got an axle shaft running through the middle with bearings. Please help. Please help. Thanks for watching. Let's move on to Manly Manners. Now we move on to Manly Manners, the don'ts for husbands, the charming little bit book written in 1913, 1913 to help us husbands have happy wives, happy lives. All right, so Manly Manners tells us this. Don't refuse to get up and investigate in the night if your wife hears an unusual noise or fancies she smells fire or escaping gas. She will be afraid of alarming you by getting up herself and will be awake, working herself into a fervor, fever. This may be illogical, but it's true. Okay, I think that that, that certainly applies. So as a, as a traditional, as a, we have a traditional home where, uh, um, uh, I guess I take it upon myself to, I look at, it's my job to protect the family. Of course, it only makes sense, right? Because the biggest, strongest member of the family, that would, should be the person that goes down first to conf confront any sort of a, a threat or an intruder, right? You're going to send your wife down? No, no, you're going to do it yourself. So I think that that's a really good advice. And part, what also plays into that is, is that it's, it's my job or it's your job as head of your household to make sure that everything is secure at night. Um, go around uh, before you go to sleep when everyone's going to bed and, and everything's put away and check all the doors, check all the windows, make sure that the porch light's on, make sure that the keys are out of the car, all of those things, that's your job and your responsibility as a, as a protector of your home and, and as a husband. Also, I think it's very important to have made some precautions to deal with a particular situation. Don't, you don't want to get caught flat-footed and people say, well, it'll never, I mean, the chances of, some, of a home invasion in the middle of the night are so rare, you know, it's not never going to happen to me. 
Well, I don't know what the chances are and, and it could happen to you. I can tell you this, um, my best friend years ago was living down in California. Uh, he was in bed uh, with his wife at the time. They had a big glass slider uh, that went off the backyard. He woke up uh, with a guy that had opened the slider and had stepped inside and had something in his hand. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine waking up in your bedroom and, and looking up in the morning, you know, the, the morning light coming in and, and, uh, and there's a man standing in your bedroom? Uh, that's, the, that's when it's too late to, 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 <laughs> to start making stuff up. You would have wanted to uh, plan for something like that. And he had. Uh, he had a Walther PPK uh, that he slept with uh, under his pillow. You know, that, that's his choice. You know, we all have our own, own ways of doing things, but that's what he did. When and was able to deal with the situation, he didn't have to uh, shoot the guy, but uh, but the guy uh, was stepping stepping and fetching to get out of there. So just it, it could happen, you know. I mean, I don't know everyone in the world. I know actually a pretty small amount of people, and one of my acquaintances has had a home invasion like that. So it does happen. So you want to uh, you know wherever you live, what you want to do, you make sure you get your family together and have a plan. Um, if there is a bump of the night, if there is broken glass at night, you want to make sure that you've discussed this with your kids and with your family and your wife and what you're going to do, how you're going to deal with them, how you're going to protect them. When you lay out your house or when you pick whose bedroom is what, you want to think about these things. You want to place mirrors uh, so you can, if you have a second story, so you can see or blind corners, so you can kind of see what's going on. So you don't have to expose yourself. There's a lot of resources out there. Um, just look them up, but just have a plan and, um, and don't leave it to your wife to go down and to investigate a dangerous situation. We'll do one more here. Don't hang about the house all day if your occupation does not take you abroad. Spend regular hours in your study or den, or go out and play golf, but don't inflict your company on your wife during every minute of the day. She is fond of you, but she wants to be free sometimes, and she has business to do if you have it. That's great advice. That's why I've always um, been a very, real advocate of having yourself a personal space. Whether it be you carve a little notch out in the garage with a workshop, or you build yourself a little shed in the background, you have something to get out of the house. Because I don't know what it is, but we as men, if we don't have a lot going on, if we have the weekend off and we don't have anything planned, we seem to get kind of critical. Um, and it's easy to sit there on the couch and watch TV while your wife is running around and with nothing on your mind to think about all of her shortcomings and all the things she's not doing right or how she's not cooking dinner the way you like it or how she's not keeping the house as tidy as you would like it. You know what? When you find yourself in that situation, it's time to get out of the house. It's time to get a hobby. It's time to go do something, grab the kids, go somewhere, and leave your wife alone. <laughs> As, um, the wife, the, our poor wives probably usually <clears throat> don't have the, the benefit of um, all of the uh, places to escape to. You know, they're not really into hanging out in a dirty old shop. They're not really into hanging out into a, a garden shed where we're completely happy and content with that. So get out of her hair, let her do her things. There's time to be together and there's a time to be apart. Um, and it's really important and it's a, it's a great thing for your relationship for you to have a place uh, that you can get out and get out of her hair um, and not be underfoot all the time. I think that that's great advice. So thanks for watching. Please help. Please help tell me what this is. We'll see you guys on the next video. So our friends, The Real Martian, uh, recently introduced me to uh, some friends of theirs, a young couple that runs a YouTube channel called The Axe Family. Uh, we spent some time with them, and they were just a delightful couple, and they make really great YouTube videos. And so he came over, and we did a very candid interview on homesteading and our lifestyle choice, and uh, I think you might enjoy it. So I'll put that up there in the top left. So if you'd like to go watch that interview, you can click and link over and subscribe and tell them I said hi. Thanks for watching.